Hi guys, if you're new here, I'm Anthony and I'm a fourth year medical student studying at the University of Southampton. Today, I'm going to be talking about how I ranked top 1% at medical school last year in my exams and how I've been able to consistently achieve over 75% in every exam I've taken. And bearing in mind, this is not at the sacrifice of my social life, my passions, my sports, my hobbies, and going to the gym and just living a healthy, balanced lifestyle. When you go to medical school, there's this perception that, you know, you can't have fun, you can't enjoy yourself. You can only have one or the other. They say you can't have the three S's, which are the studies, sports, and social side. Completely untrue. You can do all three, but you have to be, be disciplined and manage your time well. And these are probably the most high yield tips I've learned through my three years of medical school. Without further ado, let's get right into it. So the first tip and probably the most important would be little and often. So studying consistently throughout the year instead of leaving it to the last minute. The more times you cover a specific topic, the longer it stays in your memory. So this is a concept known as space repetition. It's covered all across YouTube. There was a video made by Ali Abdal a couple years ago that blew a lot of people's minds on how to revise. This, this concept of space repetition is so, so accurate. I used to be that guy who, who studied last minute, got bad results, and then wondered why, why I wasn't getting good results. But when you employ the method of space repetition, if you start early, then by the time you reach exams, you'll just find that it is somewhere up there in your brain. You just got to think hard enough and it will be there. And you can trust yourself. You can trust your brain to pull out that information when you need it, when you're stressed in the exam. Also with this, it feels a lot easier, doesn't it? To study one hour a day for say three months in a row than to do four or five hours a day for six weeks. It just feels a lot easier. Every day you can still enjoy everything you want to enjoy. One hour of your day spent dedicated to studying is not gonna stop you from doing whatever else you enjoy. Social activities, your sports, gym, seeing friends and family. If you study one hour a day, you're not going to have to miss all the important things, all the other things outside medical school that you enjoy in your life. And I think that's such an important thing that people people don't often see that hidden cost that comes with studying late. It means you have to sacrifice going to these things, things that will help you to, to relieve stress. So tip number three is question banks. And the two main ones I use are PassMed and QuizMed. These are like 99% of medical students probably use these. And they're great, they're amazing. It makes you actively think using your brain rather than just passively reading notes, which doesn't actually do much. Just do questions, do questions, do a lot of them. And over time, you'll start to develop an appreciation for the types of questions that come up and the little nuances between each kind of question. It's important to know with question banks, just start as early as possible. A lot of people delay starting questions because they think, oh, I'm gonna get like 20%. But at the end of the day, no one's scoring you. That These aren't real results and no one cares. So if you end up getting 20% in your first go, that does not matter. That's what everyone gets. But the whole point is use question banks as a form of studying, not as a form of revision only. It's both. Personally, question banks are the main part of my studying. The revision principle is called active recall, which you've probably al already heard of, probably from Ali Abdal. He's a legend. You know that feeling when your brain is tired, it hurts a little bit? That's when you've used active recall a lot. You've really, really pushed yourself. And that's when you're learning. It's so easy to sit there and just read and highlight some notes, but that's not gonna do anything. It's not gonna do anything. You can also do flashcards, which is essentially the same thing as a question. Like you're making a question, and the back is the answer. So it's essentially the same thing. A lot of people use Anki. Personally, I don't use it. I think just keep it simple, you know? Okay, so point number three is to stop taking notes and kiss, keep it stupidly simple. This is probably my favorite one. And I think not many people will say this, but kiss, okay, kiss. So what I mean by this is when you found what works for you, stick to it. Don't get persuaded by other people to do what they're doing. For example, oh, um, using AI generated nonsense, right? AI generated blah, blah, blah. You probably see videos like that these days, I'm, I'm guessing. Question papers, question banks, maybe flashcards, but keep it stupidly simple. And I think maybe back in the day when the internet wasn't so developed, question banks like this didn't exist. When people used to use textbooks all the time, it would have been a lot harder. They would have had to gather the information from multiple sources. But I think in this day and age, 
with the internet being so developed, there's so much information out there these days that you don't need to write your own notes. Stop making notes. Stop making notes. It's a waste of time. All the information is out there online. The, the question banks I mentioned, Passman and Questman, actually have their own inbuilt textbook, which are great. And there's also a bunch of free YouTube videos. So there's no need to spend money. Don't spend money on, on studying. Just use the internet, honestly. I think using the internet and keeping it simple has elevated my exam results by like an extra 10%. Okay, number five, creating a weak area list. So this is a, a, do, a do not know list. So a list of topics which you repeatedly get questions wrong in require that little extra attention, which require a bit more of your time and are the ones that you should focus on. Not only is it useful near to the exams, it's also reassuring. It's making that list means, okay, eventually I'm gonna go through all of these before my exam. I'm not going to neglect. They make all of these questions, they might make up one two percent of the exam but you know either way i don't think you should ever be in the exam and have a question where you're like i have no idea what this is and that wouldn't happen if you start early and you're comprehensive with your studying every time you do questions write down the ones that you repeatedly get wrong and turn this into a list and then you can review this list closer to the exams this way you will you'll plug those holes you'll cover those gaps point number five study with friends study with mates have fun whilst you're studying i'm talking about when it comes closer to the exams it doesn't have to be four hours of focused work in one block no distractions no talking you can actually study with friends you can actually do questions together and you can discuss because likely you'll be you'll be studying with people who are similar abilities to you so if you get a question wrong and you don't understand how to do it, they're also not likely to understand. So you can share ideas. It's more about sharing your thought processes and the reasoning behind your answers, because that's so important. Understanding the reasoning is what gives you the confidence to, in exams. But yeah, study with friends. Burnout is real. Burnout is real. Overstudying is definitely real. Have you ever had this before? You know, like three days before the exam, you've done so much studying already. You just don't want to study anymore. You just want to get it done and over with. You don't want that feeling. You do not want that feeling because it means that you're not sharp you come to the exam and you're just a bit you're a bit sluggish you're not sharp you're not ready for battle so take it chill like study hard but make it sustainable and make it fun remember we're all on the same path we're all on the same journey to become the best doctors we can be lift everyone up make it easier for everyone because exams are tough they're it's a stressful time but obviously there's ways there's ways to target that stress and one thing is to study with friends Okay, point number six is don't go too much into detail early on. Don't go into too much detail early on. Breadth over depth first and then depth. At the beginning, you're going to be bad. That's the harsh truth. When you do questions at the beginning, you're going to score 20, 30, 40%, 50%. And it's going to feel bad because you think, oh, this is... I usually get better than this. I, I, You have to put your ego to one side and realize that getting these low scores are just part of the process. You're going to get good scores. There's no doubt you're going to get good scores, it's, but you need to start somewhere. You have to learn somehow. So starting off with questions early on, you need to put your ego to one side. And then as you get closer to the exams, then you can start going into depth. You can start plugging those 1% gaps. There's an important principle to keep in mind called the Pareto principle or the 80-20 rule, which states that 80% of the outputs come from 20% of the inputs. It doesn't mean put in 20% hard work. It means 20% of the content is going to make up 80% of the mark. So it's important to do breadth first. And then after you, you have a really good bird's eye view of everything and the topics, then you can start zooming in, zooming right in to plug those holes and to get those one percent this way also it's just way less stressful it's way less stressful having all that knowledge there so when people ask you questions when, when your friends test you 99 percent of the time you're gonna know the right answer it's only that one percent of the time you don't know the right answer would you rather have that or your friends test you and you can only get one percent you're an expert at cardiology you can only do answer those questions right but every other question you flop the moral of the story is it's less stressful it's better because once you have breadth, there are some very complicated ideas and concepts in medicine that only make sense when you have the, the basic grounding to accompany it. Some hard concepts stand on the shoulders of basic knowledge. So if you don't have that basic knowledge, then you will not be able to appreciate and understand the harder topics as well. 
And finally, number seven, make exercise and socializing non-negotiables. Never, ever, ever neglect your health when it comes to exams. Because not only is there more to life than exams, like your health is, the, is way more important than exams. Being healthy, being fit, is going to clear your mind and it's gonna make you study better. It really is true that healthy mind, healthy body, everything is connected. If you exercise and you take breaks, you're gonna study better and your brain is gonna store information better. You're gonna be able to memorize better. If you don't sleep well, you're not gonna be able to study well. So make sleep, exercise, and socializing with friends non-negotiables, especially sleep. There's this culture of I'll sleep when I die kind of attitude. And it's important because sleep is where connections and neurons form in your brain and they strengthen the, the stuff that you've learned in the days. For example, if you go and study hard, you can then go on a night out, drink a lot, have poor sleep, and then all your, your progress is gonna be ruined. Like you're not gonna be able to retain that information. All right guys, so I'm just editing this video and I realized that I'm kind of ranting a lot. I low key go on a lot of tangents and rant a lot. I think you should always think for yourself and just take the things that are most relevant to you. You don't need to listen to everything. Just take the things that and use use little bits. If if only if only one thing is useful to you, at least, you know, there's been there's value provided there. So um I uh, I hope the uh, ranting it doesn't put anyone off uh, and apologize about that. Alright guys, that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you've gained some kind of value from watching this video and you can apply these tips for yourself. Don't forget to smash the like button, like, comment, subscribe and thank you very much. I'll see you in the next video. Stay tuned.